Welcome to Daniel Reviews. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and today we are looking at another installment, if you will, on my series on how to power your Delta Pro with an external battery bank. Let's get into it. All right, so if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I've done several videos on this. Um, I've done quite a few things. One, trying to directly power a Delta Pro with a external battery bank, just straight connection. Um, showed that you can do that and th there are some limitations with doing that. I've also shown how you can do a connection from a with a DC to DC boost converter uh, which also works and though there are some limitations and uh, hesitations about the reliability and you know um, quality of the components used. I've also demonstrated that you can do an AC to DC converter from an external uh, battery bank as well and um, that actually being the most reliable and seemed like the safest, even though it was not the most efficient. So those are things I've already proved. One of the questions that was asked that I honestly didn't know the answer is, could you power two Delta Pros from the same server battery bank, um, particularly using just a DC to DC, um, just straight up power connector uh, without any doing boost conversion or anything like that? I didn't know the answer. I didn't know how it would work. So this installment is about figuring out if you can and what happens. Let's find out. All right, well, we're back in my garage, as you can imagine. <laughs> and I've got two Delta Pros hooked up here. I've got my bat external battery bank up here uh, connected. It's probably not fully charged, but it's charged enough that we can do this test to see if I can feed both Delta Pro 1 and Delta Pro 2 from the external battery bank. Let's see what happens. So you can see one is definitely charging. Um, looks like it's pulling at uh, 400 watts, which is probably, it's probably limiting it and thinking it's a um, car input. I can solve that with, it's probably the XT60 connector. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on solving that. Now let's connect the other one and see what happens. Okay, so. This is interesting behavior. Hopefully you can see this. It's jumping 400, then down to 60, 600, then down to 80. It's jumping all around, right? Like it is um, inputting power, but I suspect, I don't know this. This is just my thought, but I'm, I suspect it's kind of fighting with the other controller for how much power it can pull from there. And I'm not convinced that you know, I, I'd be interested in seeing what the, this is doing, I guess. Um, you would expect it to hold fairly steady at a certain amount, like 400 watts or, or whatever, um, similar to how this one's doing it, right? So that's kind of odd behavior. All right, so as I mentioned, this one's jumping around a lot. I don't entirely know why. Uh, I suspect it's because it's fighting that one over there and that, um, you know, only one of the controllers is winning very well. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that, it's just my guess. Um, some of you, you tech heads out there that know a lot more about this might ha be able to say exactly why, but that's what I'm thinking is going on. So what I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna unplug this one over here, the steady one, and then see if this one normalizes and just draws at a steady rate, which is what it has done in the past. If I can zoom in here, All right, you can see that this one is rolling along very steady at 787 now. It is not jumping around like we saw before. It's getting a very consistent draw. And then if I spin over here to the other one, of course, it's at zero. So, so I had this one plugged in first, and then I plugged in this one. And now, interestingly, um, they're both very steady. One's pulling a, well, okay, maybe not. It was pulling a fairly steady 800 or so, and it's, I think it still is. And this one's pulling a fairly steady 400 over there. Again, the 400 over here is because of the XT60 connector. I can fix that. I could put in an X6, XT60i connector and get that working right. But uh, for the purpose of this test, it doesn't matter. The point is you can draw it. Both are drawing, seem to be drawing pretty consistently. Um, there's not a jumping around now on this one. All I did was unplug this one and plug it back in after about 20 seconds. And now both seem to be running actually really consistently. All right, well, that was interesting. I honestly didn't know what to expect. I kind of thought the behavior we first saw at the beginning of the video was going to be the exact result 
um, of plugging in both Delta Pros where one was jumping up and down and not getting the full power. Actually, what I really thought was both Delta Pros would be doing that erratic behavior where it's jumping up and down and trying to couldn't pull consistent voltage or wattage from the external battery bank. But what we saw was that one came in pretty steady and the other one was fluctuating. And then what I did is I unplugged the steady one, saw the other one level out at 800-ish uh, watts, and then I plugged the other one back in, and both stayed pretty steady. Um, so, <clears throat> interesting. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. Now we know. Um, but I, it looks like, yes, you absolutely can power two Delta Pros from an external battery bank with a direct DC uh, connection, just a wired connection. Um, I will say that... <laughs> There's limitation to this approach. I, I've mentioned them in the previous video. The real problem is with a, a, just a direct battery connection like this, as you drain down your, your server, your external battery, there's nothing monitoring it to know when to cut it off, right? Like there's no safety message. So it's just gonna drain until the external battery bank is below whatever your Delta Pro is at, right? And then when the next day when your solar kicks back in, um, your, in my case, the EG4 controller, it doesn't even detect the battery because it is so drained, um, you know, it didn't have that automatic disconnect and reconnect once PV was available. So it's not a very smart, I mean that in a, you know, programmatic way, it's not, a, it may not be a very smart, just regular thing to do, but it's not a very smart integration. It'll just drain it until the external battery bank is empty. And then, you know, you may have to manually intercede the next day to get that external battery bank uh, charging up and then possibly flowing into the Delta Pro. Now, if you had a massive battery bank, may not even matter then. Uh, you may just not drain enough from the external battery bank in the hours that you don't have sunlight that the next day you'll still be charged up and, and, and you'll be good to go. Your use case may vary, but... Can it be done? We have proven it can be done. Recap for you, if you haven't seen the previous videos, this is my setup. I have two uh, 50, you know, 48 volt equivalent uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries here, wired in uh, parallel using this uh, Dinkle assembly by International Connectors. I love this. This is basically my bus bar. Um, totally uh, makes things very easy to work with. Um, I'm going to upgrade those. This is a 60 amp model. I'm going to upgrade to, I think they have a 100 amp model uh, at some point, but it's great. So I just have these wired into here and then they go out from, from here to the Delta Pros, direct wired connections. We, you know, nothing fancy, no boost converters, no nothing. And that's what was drawing the power. So it's just literally drawing right from this battery bank into the Delta Pros. Well, I think that's going to conclude this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. I know I did. I went into it not honestly knowing what would happen, and uh, I was surprised. It worked better than I thought it would. Uh, again, there's limitations. I'm not trying to say this is necessarily a wise thing, but it may work for your needs, and I trust that you're smarter than I am on, on figuring that part out. But until the next video, take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks.